Hello. You may be knowing that our body is structured with 55 to 70 percent of water. Even our forefathers said that water is life. But we don't count it in our primary needs, that is food, clothing and shelter, because we have to pay for our primary needs. But water is freely available. But in coming decades, world would be facing huge crisis of water. It is said that third world war would be happening for the drinking water. At present, we are spending lots of money on purification of water. But is this spending of money appropriate? Before going on the process of purification, let's get to know about the water in detail. Water covers 71% of Earth's surface and on Earth, 96.5% of the planet's water is found in oceans. Out of remaining 3.5%, more than 2.5% water is existing in the form of ice caps, clouds, vapors, biological bodies and manufacturing products. Less than 1% is available in the form of waterfalls, lakes, rivers, wells and bore wells. For 700 crore people, animals, farms, trees and factories etc. If we think only about India, it consists lots of water. If we use this water in a proper manner, thinking about our earth and India, let us take Mumbai first. If I ask you, from where Mumbai gets the water and how it comes, don't know? Mumbai gets two types of water. First is lake water, that is the surface water. Mumbai gets more than 90% of water from dams like Bhatsa, Upper Vaitarna, Lower Vaitarna and Tansa. Mumbai needs 3000 million liters of water per day which is supplied through the pipelines which are spread more than 100 kilometers but in some areas. Where this water can't reach, people over there use bore wells or wells water. Now, let's turn on to the water purifying process. Let us consider RO technology first which is most popular and believed to be advanced technology of purifying industry. Do you know how RO technology works on purifying water? Let's see. In this process, water under high pressure pass through semi-permeable membrane having pore diameter of 0.0001 micron. In simple language, 1 crore portion of 1 millimeter that allow only water molecules to pass through it. In such a minute filtration, more than 90% of minerals, heavy metals, arsenic and all the microorganisms get filtered. This is similar to the natural purifying process where coconut tree absorbs purified water from the sea. This was the technical part. But exactly, RO technology can remove more than 90% of arsenic, heavy metals, minerals and pesticides from the water. RO technology can change the taste of water and make it sweet. But dams which provide water to Mumbai are situated in Thane forest area. All dams are safe and there are no farms and industrial wastage in it. This is rainwater, so its mineral level is very less than permissible limit. And much more than that, Mumbai's water is good in taste, because of which RO technology's benefit do not suit Mumbai's water. Still we pass soft water. From RO technology, what would happen? Why don't we ask an expert? Sir? Yes? May I ask you some questions? Yes, of course. Is there any benefit of RO technology for Mumbai's water? No. It's not that much beneficial for Mumbai's water. As I would say, for a human body, the main source of getting minerals like calcium, magnesium and iron is through food. But water is regarded as additional source. RO technology makes hard water sweet. At the same time, if water is sweet, then it will demineralize and that will be harmful for human health. When BMC water passes through membrane, due to chlorine in water, the membrane sheet gets deteriorated. After some time, this weakened sheet gets choked due to scaling, turbidity and enzymes created by bacteria. This finally results in broken membrane sheet due to the excess pressure. Once it is broken, impurities and bacteria can easily pass through it. In any domestic RO system, the total water wastage could be 70%. It means to get one glass of water, three glasses of water get wasted. 
Mumbai's water is not that bad to waste so much water. If you think of RO based technology purifiers and the maintenance thereafter, this would be two to three times of any other technology purifiers. Now we'll consider the old and most famous technology that is UV technology. Now what is UV technology? Bacteria grow with multiplication. It means one bacteria gets divided into two, two into four and four into eight bacteria and so on. In UV technology, a high dose of ultraviolet energy at a wavelength of 254 nanometers destroys pathogenic microbes by affecting the DNA in the cell and multiplication of microorganisms get stopped and they can't reproduce. Because of this, within 20 to 25 minutes time, when lifespan gets over, they die completely. If you intend to buy a UV based purifier, please consider the following. Metal of UV chamber should be ideally food graded stainless steel. In spite of this, UV chambers manufactured by large companies are made out of aluminium. The aluminium oxides which get discharged through this are harmful for the human brain. UV chamber needs to be in horizontal position rather than in vertical position. In vertical position, the movement of water is straight, but in horizontal position, the water passes with churning motion. It ensures that all the germs get in touch with UV rays. The intensity of any tube light available in the market today would not maintain the same intensity that it had at initial stage. When intensity of UV lamp decreases from 254 nanometers wavelength, it cannot destroy the DNA structure of microorganisms. The UV tube light cannot be immersed directly into the water. So to protect it from water, there is a provision of quartz jacket. But over a period of time, there is scaling and soil deposit formed on the quartz jacket. And this causes obstruction to the UV rays, which in turn diminishes the result and quality of UV system. UV rays are effective for many species of bacteria and viruses, but not all. So we don't require RO technology and we can't trust UV technology 100%. So don't we have any other technology which can save my family, my employees from diseases? Yes, we have. And this technology does not need electricity. Means chemicals are used to purify the water? No, in this process, no chemical is used. But even this technology is capable of purifying Mumbai's water. And name of this technology is ultrafiltration. In UF systems, the water passes through hollow fiber membrane with 0.01 micron power size, which does not allow bacteria, virus and turbidity. In UF membrane with 0.01 micron filtration, we can easily remove microorganisms, collides and minute turbidity from water without disturbing its natural mineral content. This is similar to plant tissues absorbing purified water from the dirty subsoil water. Therefore, UF technology is the best option for soft water like the water supplied by BMC. The advantages of EF technology are ability of removing microorganisms and minute turbidity from water, does not require electricity, low price and less maintenance. Few years ago, some scientists from Baba Atomic Research Center developed water purifier for Indians in which they use UF technology. In September 2010, there was a survey conducted by one of the government bodies named National Institute of Virology on water purifiers in India. In that test, UV and RO based purifiers failed, but UF technology based purifiers passed. Thank you, sir. I bought my old purifier looking at big brand of a company, or perhaps my favorite actor advertises it. But in reality, the answer is in our water. So, we need to understand the type of water and the suitable technology. I think I got answers to my questions. But some of my questions remain unanswered. Such as, rather than changing the purifier, can I only change the technology or UV chamber? Can aluminium be converted 
to stainless steel can i put normal purifier in my office for my staff of 100 which company should i prefer while buying new purifier for all my questions i'm going to call on one phone number if you have questions you can also call